Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of my main progression series. Now, we finished off last time with a Hydra task. I have never done the Alchemical Hydra, but just in the last episode, we finally reached 95 Slayer, which means for the first time, we can do one of the best Slayer moneymakers in the entire game. We also finished off at total level 2087, and we have a lot of stuff planned for today. Now, as I have finally unlocked all of the Slayer monsters, going forward, I'm going to optimize my Slayer experience a bit more, which means I'm going to be updating my block list to be more in line with Konar Slayer. I'd really love to get the Lumbridge Elite Diaries done as well for the final block slot, and I think we have a few more things we need to unlock with Slayer points. Anyway guys, as always, if you do enjoy these videos, I'd really appreciate it. If you leave the video a like, always subs out. Anyway guys, let's get started. Well, I guess we've learned Hydra. I mean, we're 30 kills in now, but we got pretty much the hang of it. Hydra is really easy. I mean, considering it is the highest level Slayer monster, it's way easier to learn than Zalra. Uh, way easier to learn than Vorkath, in my opinion. You pretty much just have to count to three and that's it. Uh, while it's not really AFK, it's pretty damn easy and the money per hour here is crazy. I mean, we just did a full trip here and it was fairly short compared to what some people can do. Once you get the hang of Hydra, you can start bringing a lot more prayer potions and less food. Uh, but even on my very first trip here, we got 1.3 mil. I mean, we got a little bit lucky on the bolts, but still, so much money. Well, uh, I definitely don't deserve that one. I'm so sorry, guys. We got the Hydro Claw on, I don't even know, kill count 70 or something? That is so fucking lucky. Oh my god, I feel like this month, YouTubers have just been absolutely spooned the Hydro Claw. Hydra Claw on kill count number 72, worth 57 mil. I am so fucking lucky, my god. 58 mil for that, that is the most valuable drop I have gotten in a long time, oh my god. Well that pretty much seals the deal, Hydra is now my new favorite boss. <laughs> I think it's actually a little bit better to maybe combine this into a Dragon Hunter Lance. So we went ahead and bought a Zamorak and Hasta, combined them together, and I think we're gonna get an extra 3 or 400k, but at the very least this will sell pretty much instantly. We're gonna dump it in here for 73 mil, which means we made, yeah, about 58 mil, padding our bank value nicely here. I think if we get a couple more drops like that, we can probably go ahead and buy a Twisted Bow. Oh my god, we're at the end of our task, and we actually got another drop. We got the Hydra's Eye. I mean, I don't deserve anything else, but the Hydra's Eye is common enough. Well, that was an extremely successful Slayer task. My god, we actually also got 208,000 Slayer experience. The actual Slayer experience per hour here is actually pretty good. Uh, this boss is just totally insane, really really good money per hour, really good experience per hour. The only drawback of course is you do need to get Hydra Task from Konar, but you know what, that is definitely a price I'm willing to pay. So from that one task, we ended up getting 75 mil, and that's not even including the value of the Hydra Eye, which is worth a couple mil just on its own. Obviously we didn't pick up all of the Hydra Bones, but still, that's a pretty damn good task. And uh, yeah, we're already almost 25% of the way to our next level just from one task. We also got an Elite, which we turned into a Master, which we turned into a fairly mediocre drop, but that's okay for a Master Clue, I guess. <laughs> also, we got two Brimstone Keys. I guess we could add that to our loot total as well. And eh, nothing special on that one. Okay, can we get the back-to-back? -back? Just go right back in there. No, we can't, but that is a pretty good task anyway. We'll go do that one quickly. Okay, we have a bit of a random woodcutting level coming in here, but it's something I really need to start focusing on because woodcutting is one of my lowest level skills, and we actually are going to need a higher level woodcutting level for a few things, but primarily the Karend Elite Diary, which I want to get done fairly soon for Hydra, and I guess if I ever do Blood Rune Crafting as well. Okay, we had another Elite in the bank, so we made another Master Clue, and... Ah, oh, that's kind of disappointing. I swear the clues that take the longest to do always have the worst loot, well, I guess that's another master. We were just planning on getting a hard clue, but we got both an elite and a hard, which means, well, we could probably just do another master clue. Okay, I think we're actually finally ready to unlock Boss Slayer. I'm really excited to try out new bosses, and obviously, unlocking Boss Slayer will be an awesome way to try out some new bosses. No, it's not efficient experience-wise, but I'm not really in it for that now. All right, so we just actually got a runecrafting level, and here's why. Well, a couple reasons. For one, my Master Clue actually requires me to have 77 rune crafting so I can make a Blood Rune. Now on top of that, there are multiple diaries that require you to have 77 rune crafting, so that's actually what I'm going to be working on next. Now because I do hate rune crafting more or less, we're actually going to be doing Day Alt Essence Mining. We actually just got a mining level doing that, which is kind of crazy because you only get about 5,000 experience per hour here. Now today I have been doing a lot of Day Alt Essence Mining, 
Uh, we've actually managed to get around 14,000 SNs and you get around three or 4,000 per hour. Uh, so we spent pretty much the entire day mining, which means we have around 14,000 day alt essence in our bank, which will increase our XP per hour when we're doing ZMI. While day alt essence mining isn't really efficient overall if you're just going for runecrafting experience, and it makes it so you only have to runecraft two thirds of the time versus, well, all the time. I don't think that will be enough essence to get us to 77, but it's a good start. Okay, so we finally got 75 rune crafting, which is a very important level because you get access now to the giant pouch, which is actually really significant. It will increase your XP per hour, I think by like 10% or something, like it's it's a lot. <laughs> uh, so I'm pretty happy to have it. I mean, granted, you don't really use it for blood rune crafting, but you know, we'll have it if we want to do some ZMI. Oh yeah, this makes such a big difference. The giant pouch is awesome. It does require a little bit more clicking but definitely worth it. There is level 76 runecrafting, which is pretty awesome because we now have the runecrafting requirement for the Lumbridge Elite Diary. <laughs> there is one problem though, and that is Mage Training Arena, which might be the only thing in this game that is worse than runecrafting. Yeah, I actually kind of prefer to do runecrafting. We opted not even to do Mage Training Arena yet, and instead we got 77 runecrafting, which is huge. Of course, you unlock blood runes, which means now I have access to a fairly AFK and profitable runecrafting training method. It's not very quick. You're only going to get somewhere between 35,000 and 40,000 experience per hour, but you can do it very passively in the background. So I'm really excited to give it a try. Also, that is the requirement for my master step, which we're finally going to get around to doing. This master clue scroll is going on about a week now, but regardless, we have one big goal for the account out of the way. Blood rune crafting is really vital to get. And of course, we now have the master step for any time in the future. Okay, so was that journey worth it? I'm gonna say probably not. Well, that wasn't worth rune crafting for, but not so bad. All right, so we've gotten the hang of blood rune crafting. It's really easy. If you're using resizable mode and have the extended draw distance open, it's pretty damn AFK. And there we go, we got another runecrafting level, that is 78 runecrafting, which is actually a very big milestone level for me as well. That means I can actually finish my very first Elite Diary. I can now finish the Varrock Elite Diaries, which aren't granted that useful, but it's my first Elite ever and I'm really excited about it. And of course, 50,000 experience, that is always going to be useful. Okay, so we needed the 78 runecrafting to make 100 earth runes at once, uh, which we can now do. I really want to know how they made the noise for Plank Meg, or maybe I don't, they're probably torturing someone. And with that final dart made, we are now done with our very first Elite Diary. Once you actually have all of the requirements, uh, finishing the diary is incredibly quick. There's only like five tasks on the Elite. Uh, so beyond the 50,000 experience, you do get access to 120 battle staffs a day, which is useful. That's about 100 to 120k in profit per day with only a minute's work. Definitely worth it, although I do always forget. Hey, there's my very first boss task, uh, and Barrows at that, I've never done Barrows on task before. I know every Barrows brother counts as a kill count, which means uh, the maximum actual Barrows runs you could do is six, which is not that much, so we'll just go ahead and do the maximum amount. Now what's nice about Boss Slayer is you do get a bonus amount of experience at the end, even though I only killed 36 Barrows brothers, we're actually going to get another 5,000 just for killing the last one. 
And for our final chest, uh, oh my god, we actually got an item. Well, from only six runs, we ended up getting just over a mil, and uh, oh my god, the Guthans War Spear is sad. Alright, so we've been doing our fair share of blood rune crafting, and with this last inventory here, that is going to be 79 rune crafting. Uh, my next goal is going to be 82, which means I will then be able to finish the Fremenic Diary, I think. Well, there's no hiding, guys. We finally have to do it. Uh, we have the rune crafting level requirement, but the only thing holding us back from arguably one of the most useful diaries in the entire game, that being the Lumbridge Diary. The only thing we have left is Mage Training Arena. For some reason, some sick Jagex employee made it so that you have to cast Bones to Peaches to finish the Lumbridge Hard Diary, which means, unfortunately, we have to do some Mage Training Arena. I don't really know how long this is going to take. I've heard around five hours. Hopefully, it's not too bad. Okay, Rune Light made this room really easy and fairly AFK. This room took me just over an hour, I think. Well, Graveyard is not the slowest room, but it is the most clicking and it's annoying because you're just very slowly draining HP. But we finally did it. There are 200 Graveyard points. We're never coming back here again, I don't think. The Telekinetic room was pretty easy. Again, Rune Light makes it brain dead. Like, they tell you exactly where to stand and it's just really easy. I think it was actually the most time consuming though. I think this one took me almost an hour and a half. Don't really know why. Just felt very slow. Okay, this room is really quick. Uh, with the level 6 enchant, I think it only took me about half an hour. So that means we can now afford the Bones to Peaches spell. And I think the total time it took me is around 4 hours or 4.5 hours. So actually a little bit quicker. I was focusing all day and we just got it done. Well, all that work led to this. Well, we're done. <laughs> That's the only time we're probably ever going to need to actually cast that spell. Not saying it's not useful, but again, you can't just buy Bones to Peaches tablets, which don't even have a requirement to have finished Mage Training Arena. This may also be the first time and probably only time I am taking the Underground Train. Such a weird piece of content I never knew existed. I guess that is kind of what the benefit of the diaries are. Now, luckily, our Belladonna plant didn't die, and that means we are now done with the Lumbridge and Drainer Hard Diary, which are arguably harder than the stupid Elite Diary. Okay, so there is our experience lamp for runecrafting. That's another 15,000. Thank you very much. That saves us like half an hour. Our runecrafting is finally paying off. We can now make 140 water runes at once. Oh my god, think of the profit. Okay, I'm glad that worked out. We actually had to boost with the Dragon Act. Our woodcutting level is so low, we can't even chop magics, which is a little sad. But luckily, we got away with it. The Lumberge Elite Diaries are literally just bringing you from one piece of dead content to the next piece of dead content. But anyway, we are now done with the Lumbridge Elite Diaries, which I am extremely excited about. There are so many good things that come with the Lumbridge Elite Diary. First up here, probably the single best quality of life thing you get from this is you no longer need to bring a Draymond Staff whenever you use a Fairy Ring. This is incredibly useful and can save you inventory spaces sometimes. Now on top of that, we also get an additional block slot for Slayer, which is also incredibly useful. 50,000 uh, rune crafting experience, of course. And on top of that, you get the High Alchemy Ring, which means when you are bursting tasks, you can actually still cast High Alchemy if you bring that with you, which is also actually really damn useful. So I'd say the Lumbridge Diaries are across the board one of the most useful diaries in the game, and I'm really stoked that we have them done. Anyway guys, that is probably where I'm going to leave it for today. Next time we're going to hopefully work on leveling up these low level skills. I mean, anything in the 70s is just too low at this point. We are pretty much all set up for Konar Slayer, so we're going to be doing a lot of that. And maybe we'll also get around to banging out a couple more diaries. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Now before I go here, I want to go give a massive thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. A huge thank you to Cappy, Guy Fox, Brad Sings, Valhalla Lad, Ocelot, Kush Patel, and Brian Robinson for all subscribing at the Dragon Tier membership. Thank you guys a lot. I really appreciate it. Also, a big thank you to Red Kamikaze, Birdbot, Timothy Chen, and Base Titch. As always, if you guys are looking for another way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do so. You can become immortalized in my videos, get access to my video release schedule, and of course, get a custom role in my Discord server. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time.